COVID has reminded us we cannot go alone. This is the whole, this is a problem, especially in South Asia. Sharpen you, you have started at the right moment when Mubashar Hassan, a couple of years ago, started India Pakistan relationship. Similarly, I think it's inspiring that we all have to be a soft order. We should be able to visit one each another. Now we can see how it has affected everybody's life. All of us has either lost a relation or a friend or in, my own, in our own country or in neighboring countries. So that's why it is an important thing that we have to think of a togetherness. We can cannot be moved alone. Still, <clears throat> unfortunately, we are living in a world of divided and doom. You see, last 15 years, India doesn't allow me to go to India. They refuse me visa. Uh, visa. So similarly, ACDRE, we do not, uh, Bangladesh do not allow the Pakistanis to come. Our many friends in the meetings we couldn't, do, we couldn't bring them. It is very irrational. You like uh, these are the people who will bring and closeness. This will help many of our problem because we can think together. It is not a problem that we can alone solve, solve it. Take the case that in COVID vaccine is one thing. We should 100% people should be vaccinated, but we do not have enough vaccines. So it is a problem that we together have to think, sit down, whether it is in Bhutan, Nepal, or in Bangladesh or India, we are all one nation, I think. We are the similar people. Similarly, Pakistan, we have to together, if we put our head together, we will be moving faster. We will be able to think that lockdown, simply lockdown is not going to solve the problem. It's COVID in Bangladesh, if we take the case of Bangladesh, about 25 million new people become poverty. They have lost their incomes and other things. The poor number of poor has increased by 25 million. So now in India, really, with the lockdown, it's an important process. One cannot, but at the same time, life, we must give them the food they need especially the poor people. So lockdown, without giving them the food, it is an irresponsible, irrational decision. Similarly, like as you know, we have got the Eid, Eid al -Azha. Our people goes to home to see the children. They work in the city and go back to the, where their children are living with their, with their parents or anything. Once a year, would they not go? Simply ordering not to go is not good enough. So what we have to do? And we have to do the doing more tests. Those who we can, we can appeal to them. If you can, don't go. But if you want to go home, please get you tested. And it is the saying, get you tested, is not good enough. You must make tests available easily in all bus stands, launch, Radio stations, everywhere it should be available. Say to them, I have not been tested, so that you can take the sample and tell them in a couple of hours that you have got to be, uh, if you have got a, a COVID, so we can request it that you don't go. The rest of the people can go see that. So these are the, we have to be practical. Unless we are practical people. Now what my government did, they have to stop the people inter-district transports, uh, 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 buses and other stuff. So who is suffering? It's the poor. Everything poor. And uh, recently, in my country, uh, government want to ban the rickshaw with the motorized rickshaw. We cannot even imagine poor men will have a bit of comfort. It's not tolerable for us. So these are the things. We are so intolerant nations. Once we have become out of poverty, we don't want other people to have a better life. So that's why really I think together, if we all together think problem, similar problem exists in 
other countries too, I know that. So especially the vaccine, the developed countries holding a large amount, a large quantity of vaccines. So these are the things we should really try to get it. They should be generous. They should be generous. On the other side, our government should also be rational. They should invest more in the healthcare. They should invest more in the healthcare and education. Any seed of that? What? Where my uh, recently our budget, national budget is, where they, they are spending one fifth of the total budget on the bureaucracy. One fifth. And what we are doing, almost nearly 12% of our national income goes to pay the interest of foreign loans. So these are the things on. So we have to discuss, we have to put considerations, and we again, I think healthcare, it needs to be more examined. The physician trained, they are not willing to go to the day. But they have trained at the cost of the, day, of the people, of the nations. Everybody has paid for their educations, either by cash or by allowing them to be a, 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 a guinea pig. So for this reason, I think we together have to thank, thank you, all these things together. In America, even a country Thank like America, United States, 50 million people do not have any health insurance. Medicaid, the 12 states do not have Medicaid. So these are the things we have to discuss. We have to learn from other people's mistakes. And with this region, Thank each one, we have to work together, talk together, and, and freely and frankly. That's, that th will thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sapir. This is a very important issue. It's not only a paramedic issue. Like a woman is the backbone of the country. Economy, mm. Bangla, country like Bangladesh or India, uh, it is uh, really very important. They are, they are suffering. This uh, sort of pandemic affects them most because they, they are families dependent on them and them really the way they have been still the security of the women is not ensured in a country like Bangladesh. It is very unfortunate that still people are girls being molested, being attacked in buses and other things. So this is one. This is also really for the safety of the women is a very crucial issue. Government have to take much more. Government and the public, we all together have to assure that there are women's security and other. Because that. secondly, the paramedic is a very important factor. As my young friend in uh, like in Nepal telling. The, we cannot in the next 50 years in the rural areas of every part of Nepal or in Bangladesh to, we are hoping that the, the doctors should be available. It's a very unlikely. But if we really train, they will be available. They are clearly concerned. Another thing I want to remind you all, like you see, our villages, whether India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, or Nepal, we all had a traditional birth attendant system who delivered the baby. They are technically, we can improve their capacity. So these are the people, unfortunately, WHO and UNICEF, in the name of a development, they are ignoring them. They are discarding them. You see, I have never seen my 50 years of work in Bangladesh. Never ever a die has refused to go to a house at the midnight. Whereas doctors, nurses, they will always say my security card and whatnot and other. Yeah. So they belong to the people. So I think really the what I was even my lecture here, cohesiveness. Yeah. We have to work together and we should take them, not discard them. So that is really will help us. If we really use the paramedic, they will be able to push the people more to using the mask, social distance, washing hands, and at the time of their distance, they are a, when a family member lost another, they can consoling. A doctor are not, we are not even trained how to console so, a people. Do you, do you, we have just learned, well, true. I have done my best and walk away. Yeah. But the paramedic will never do that. They yeah. will hold the hands and other. So that's why 
I think I think, I think you're right. To think, it's still a poor in, the, in, in every field, especially, especially healthcare. And we all have to cut down the army budget. 